Hello, and welcome to the University Career Center's presentation on professional job searching. My name is Meredith Wiggins, and I'm a career coach with the UCC. Before we begin, I want you to know that the UCC offers a wide variety of services to help you go from here, wherever here is, to your career. In addition to presentations on the job search process, we offer individual help with resumes, interviewing skills, networking, and more. And we can schedule an appointment via phone, email, or Skype. So please don't hesitate to reach out. We are here for you. Now, on to the presentation. The job search process can seem overwhelming. And often that's because we fall into the trap of thinking of it as one big step when really it's a series of smaller actions that taken together can put you in a good place to succeed. Today's presentation will cover the steps involved in the job search process. For more information, you can visit the UCC website at career.ku.edu slash job search, which includes links to lots of helpful resources, including a PDF version of the Strategies for a Successful Job Search Handbook seen on the screen on the right in yellow. So the first tip for you is to break the job search process down. Do not try to do everything all at once. Instead, give yourself time to move through each step of the process at a comfortable pace. What might those job search steps look like? As you can see in the graphic above, which shows a series of circles with icons symbolizing each step of the process, you want to start by finding your focus. Maybe this is an industry you want to pursue or a skill you know that you want to develop. And you then want to work on gaining experience. This might be through coursework, volunteer work, internships, or individual study. And at the same time, you need to focus on growing your network by establishing relationships with other people who work or will work in your field. Then, when it's time to focus on finding job openings, make sure that you're taking a variety of approaches to looking for opportunities. And lastly, manage your job search by keeping track of what your next steps are for each position that interests you. We're going to begin with the first component, finding your focus or identifying job search targets. Where do you hope to be working now or in a few years time? What sorts of fields are of interest to you? Take a minute to brainstorm what that might look like. And if you're feeling unsure of where to start, try thinking about what you're good at, what your talents are. You can then translate these into keywords and convert keywords into job titles. The yellow booklet featured on an earlier slide has a nice guide for how to do this. When you thought about finding your focus, what came to mind? Focus can be as broad as a general sense of a field that might interest you, or as specific as a particular type of job at a particular type of employer in a particular geographic region. The graphic currently on the screen shows an example of what this might look like on a continuum, from feeling completely unclear on the left, to knowing the general field of marketing in the middle, to knowing you wanna work at a large firm and do event promotion toward the right, all the way to knowing a specific target city for these jobs on the far right. So take a moment to think about where the job targets that you brainstormed fall on this continuum. Can you add one more element of focus, uh, maybe a type of employer or a geographic location to what you already brainstormed? Of course, having a degree of focus is necessary so that you avoid getting overwhelmed by the number of options out there. But sometimes having too much focus can be limiting in a job search. And for that reason, you want to create multiple job search targets all of which are equally focused. So prioritize what's important to you, whatever that might be, because this is up to you. And we'll talk more about how to create multiple job search targets later in this presentation. Tip number two is to make sure that you're not relying on just one method to find job opportunities. Many people watching this video have held a job at some point and chances are good that they weren't all obtained in the same way. 
three of the most common online job search tools are LinkedIn, Indeed, and Glassdoor. LinkedIn, shown at the top of the graphic, is a professional networking site that's really good for building a professional online image. You can follow organizations to better understand their culture and to be aware of their job postings. Indeed is the biggest aggregator or compiler of jobs online. It's a helpful resource for figuring out job titles to refine your search and for setting up job alerts. Glassdoor, shown at the bottom of the graphic, is a site that allows employees to anonymously review their companies and to share salary information. It does have job postings, but it's most useful for doing company research and helping you prepare for interviews. These types of sites can be fantastic tools and they're very often where students tell us they've started their search. But while they are good places to start your search, they shouldn't be the only places that you look. With employers using a variety of methods to find new hires, you should also be using a variety of methods during your job search. If you're only relying on aggregators like Indeed, you're missing out on over 80% of hiring opportunities. As you can see from the career crossroads pie chart on the screen, the most common way that people find jobs is through referrals at 22%. This means they know someone who suggested that they might be a strong fit for the position. And in fact, several of the other slices of the pie shown on the screen, like recruiter initiated, current employees, intern conversions, and former employees, are really examples of referrals via networking and connections. In fact, a 2019 survey by the National Association of Colleges and Employers found that employers rated career fairs, campus info sessions, and building relationships with relevant faculty as some of the most impactful ways to recruit new hires. In fact, at some point in their life, more than 70% of people who've held a job found and acquired a job through a connection that they had. So, how do you go about building those connections? That leads us directly to tip number three, network, network, network. You've probably heard this before. <laughs> I'll, I'll bet some of you don't like the idea. So let's reframe it. Cultivate relationships. Networking is not about asking people you don't know for favors. It's about building relationships with people who will be your future colleagues. It's important to identify individuals currently in your network and also to make new connections with people in your area of interest. So thinking of your specific job target, make a list of people from your own network who would fit each category shown on the screen. Friends, family, classmates, faculty, alumni, and supervisors. And don't forget that it's important to spend time building these relationships outside the realm of your immediate job search. <laughs> because the first question you ask someone should not be, will you recommend me for this job? The current slide shows examples of ways you can build relationships outside the immediate job search process. For example, you might stop in to a professor's in-person or online office hours, or email a formal, excuse me, a former supervisor with an update about your life at KU. You need to take the time to demonstrate that you are a thoughtful, informed, and likable person before you need someone's help getting a foot in the door. To that end, you should consider setting up some informational interviews. Informational interviews are not job interviews. You are not asking someone to employ you in these interviews. Instead, the purpose is for you to gather information about a certain type of job, a specific organization, or a line of work. You can Google a good list of questions if you're at a loss for where to start, but some examples will include, what's a typical day like here? Or what are your main responsibilities in this role? Informational interviews are brief 15 to 20 minute interactions, often held in person, but also via phone, Skype, Zoom, or email. Ideally, the conversation will carry on longer, 30 minutes to an hour, but don't assume that they have the time. When you reach the 20 minute mark, notice your interviewer's body language or verbal cues and gauge from there whether they're available to keep talking. You can also use these informational interviews 
to ask for referrals to other professionals in the field that you're interested in by saying something as simple as, do you know anyone else that you think I should get in touch with? And remember, it is not a job interview, so do not ask for a job. However, if an opening arises in the future, you might now have a closer connection than you did at first. And finally, always remember to send a thank you note and to maintain contact. LinkedIn is a great way to find professionals to add to your network and learn more about fields that interest you. So on the screen, you can see an example of the University of Kansas LinkedIn alumni tool, which is a school specific search tool that allows you to sort through the profiles of more than 100,000 KU alumni, showing common results across fields like geographic location on the left, employer in the middle, and type of industry on the right. And you can sort by other fields as well. In the example on the screen, a student typed the search terms social work, community and social services, and Lawrence, Kansas area into the search bar, looking for alumni working in community and social services in the Lawrence, Kansas area. And in the left column, geographic location, the circled result in red shows that there are 76 results that match these criteria. The middle column shows specifically where those 76 people work. And if you scroll further down the page, you can see the specific profiles for those 76 alumni. This tool isn't only for finding alumni to connect with, though. It can also be used to figure out what people have done with different majors, who employs graduates from the University of Kansas, what sorts of skills they have, and so on. The KU Mentoring Platform, found at mentoring.ku.edu, functions very similarly to the LinkedIn alumni tool, making it possible for you to search for networking connections by major, industry, group affiliation, even by where you lived on campus. The main difference between these platforms is that all the alumni in the mentoring platform have already agreed to be contacted for networking purposes, so don't be afraid to ask them. In the image on the screen, the blue majors button is highlighted because the user searched by major. The search was for art majors, returning the four profiles on the screen and others that you could potentially connect with. Tip number four addresses one of the most common mistakes in a professional job search, not letting your network know what you're looking for. Start with that list of people in your network who are connected to your job search target, but be broad. It's their connections who are going to help you because typically it's those second or third level connections that end up being the most helpful. Remember, your friends have family members and classmates and faculty. And your faculty have family and alumni and friends. And your family have classmates and alumni and friends. And alumni have classmates, friends, and families. And once you've built relationships that demonstrate that you're a trustworthy person who's not going to waste their time, most people will be happy to refer you on to others that they know. So tip number five is to make sure that you're not narrowing your focus so much that you're missing out on great opportunities. Remember the job focus spectrum that we previewed earlier in the presentation? You want to aim for a few different specific focuses by prioritizing what's important to you. So maybe it's really important to you that your work support a cause that you care about. Or maybe you know you want to work in research, but you're open to what field that might be in. Your priorities are what matter here. So a job focus or job target is a specific type of job in a specific industry and you want to create a job search plan for each specific focus that you have. If you've focused your job search targets and you're networking well, you can work on two to three plans at a time. Anything more than that, you might be spreading yourself too thin or not going deep enough in each of your plans. For example, the current slide details three job search plans in the broad field of environmental studies. Plan A, the light blue circle on the top left, focuses on working in public relations for an environmental nonprofit. Plan B, the orange circle in the bottom middle, is targeted towards a position as a naturalist for a state agency. And plan C, the dark blue circle on the top right, 
details steps to pursue a job as a brand manager for an outdoor clothing line. You might notice that these job targets share commonalities beyond being in the broad field of environmental studies. Plans A and B are both focused on public sector work in a nonprofit and a state agency, respectively, while plans A and C are both focused on marketing and public relations. And while the steps to support each individual plan are distinct, they draw on common themes. They are researching industry information and opportunities, getting to know people who work in the field, and gaining relevant experience prior to applying. And tip number six builds on that last point. Once you've identified your job targets and developed your job search plans, it's time to get to work on your application documents. Most professional positions will require a resume and a cover letter, and you should tailor them to each position that you're applying for. This doesn't mean that you have to reinvent the wheel for every application that you submit, but it does mean taking the time to demonstrate why your skills and experiences make you a good match for the employer's needs. As you can see from the information on the screen, which shows a woman holding a very tall stack of applications, there's a lot of competition out there for almost every job with on average 120 to 250 people applying for each job that is posted. So how can you make sure that your documents stand out in a positive way? You wanna make sure that you're keeping your formatting clear and easy to skim. And again, make sure that you've tailored your application to the position that you're applying for. Make it relevant. Think about the coursework, the internships, the volunteer experience, and the skills you have that make you a good fit for a job and highlight them in your application documents. For more tips about resumes and cover letters, visit career.ku.edu slash resumes and review the resume and cover letter handbook linked there. And while you're working on your resume, do not forget to polish up your social media presence because tip number seven is that social media is your living resume. You should be aware of what other people can learn about you by looking at it. So if you opened up one of your social media pages right now and you showed it to me, what would I see? What would I learn about you? How would a future employer evaluate one of your sites? Do you think it would be beneficial to you? Do you wish you could uh, erase the entire site to keep them from seeing it? Spend some time looking at your social media with a critical eye and make sure that it's accurately representing who you are and who you want to be. Because according to a 2018 survey conducted by CareerBuilder, 70% of employers were using social media to screen their candidates with another 7% planning to start doing so soon. And of that 70%, more than half of them found information that led them to not hire a candidate. So what are employers looking for when they search for you online? As you can see from the bottom right of this slide, just over one fifth are looking for a reason not to hire the candidate. And just over a third are wondering what other people are posting about a candidate online. Half are checking whether the candidate has a professional online presence at all, and nearly 60% are looking for information that supports a candidate's qualifications for the job. For example, if you were applying for a job with a company that had a strong commitment to environmentally friendly practices, following environmental groups on LinkedIn would be one way that you could demonstrate your commitment to a more sustainable world and your fit for the job itself. And finally, tip number eight, make sure that you are behaving with courtesy and professionalism both during and after the job search process. Because if someone offers you their time and their help, you need to make sure to keep in touch and to follow up with them if they reach back out. Beyond being good manners, this is also really good practice for interacting with your future colleagues. This slide shows two people shaking hands while others look on in the background. I think it's a good reminder that your professionalism and courtesy are always being evaluated. You, you never know who might refer you to your dream job. And as we saw on an earlier slide, 22% of jobs are filled via referrals. You need to build authentic relationships and make sure that you're not burning bridges. 
We in the UCC are happy to help you build a job search plan that's tailored to your interests and your needs, so please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can schedule an appointment on HireJayhawks.com or via phone at 785-864-3624. Thank you for attending this presentation, and we hope to hear from you soon.